Hi, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be filming my must-haves and essentials, that kind of thing. Um, so it's only going to be a couple of products because I have a hard time finding things that are good for my skin because um, my skin is extremely sensitive and extremely acne prone, so it kind of limits my range of products. Um, so it might not be that flashy or that eventful or it might not be a lot of products, but these are products that if they work for me, there's a good chance it will work for you if you have sensitive skin or extremely acne prone that like you put anything on and it just, you break out and turn into just an acne mess. So without further ado, I am going to begin. Um, I'm going to start with my skincare first because this was a journey and a half to find things that were okay for my skin. Um, and I find that... It, it's the most important because I don't wear much makeup anymore because I have finally got my skin to a nice clear point and even the makeup that is safe and okay for my skin sometimes I end up wearing it I have to wear it in situations where it doesn't matter that the product it is okay for acne prone skin it will still break me out for instance um, I'm a Polynesian dancer so during performances we have to wear a full face of makeup but during our performances we're sweating and sweating and there's just like we're just drenched in sweat and that's sitting there and the makeup is like caking in and then we also wear this hat um for half of our performance that covers here so now you have makeup that is extremely sweaty and now you're putting a hat on top um that you can't really clean so there's a bunch of like old foundation on there and stuff like that so um so I need my skincare to kind of counteract that and help that. That was what that whole long story was about. I almost forgot. Um, so my skincare I find is really, really important and kind of what makes up for the bad things that I encounter when I do wear my makeup. Um, so this cleanser I just recently discovered um, a couple months ago because I had one that I liked and I didn't really want to rock the boat because it didn't break me out. I find it really helped with my acne. Um, it did kind of dry me out a little bit, but not too much. I find this one that I have right now, um, dries me out more than my other one, but there's like, I'll, I'll explain the difference. So this is the one that I have right now, if it will just focus because of the lighting. So it's the Lancome Mousse Eclat. Um, it's gentle cleansing, airy foam with papaya extract, and it's for all skin types. But when I was looking into it, so I really research products. Like, I research a lot. Uh, I spent a lot of time doing it. Um, and I also do have a lot of ingredient knowledge from school. So I kind of know more than, like, the average person does. Um, which means a lot of cosmetic companies can't necessarily get away with some things that they do. Um, I'm going to do a whole video later on about um, kind of sharing my knowledge with you. But basically, a lot of what you see out there, like the non-comedogenic and all the other stuff is... It's a scam. You have to know ingredients. You have to know the products and know which ones are comedogenic, which ones are drying, which ones are irritants, which one's not good for sensitive skin. I'm sorry, this is really driving me nuts. Okay, that's a little better. Um, so even if something says it's good for acne prone or it's good for oily skin or all skin types, it's like, that's not necessarily true. So um, even though this one is for all skin types, when I was looking into it, um, even just from other people's reviews, it seems to be best for oily skin because with dry skin, it really dried them out. And as I was saying, I find I still do get dry with this compared to the spectro gel that I used to use before. Um, but the reason I switched to the Lancome was because it has more ingredients in it than the spectro gel does, which I know usually it's like less ingredients, the better. But when it comes to a cleanser, um, this has other added ingredients in it that do more than just cleanse. Like it has papaya extract, which kind of, um, gives you a little bit of a glow and stuff like that. So it's nice to just kind of have that little bit of an extra in it. Um, and I really like the consistency of this because it is a foam. Like, I'll show you. I'll use a little bit, but it's expensive because it's a Lancome. Um, so if this will focus in on it, not really. So this is it, it's just a foam, so like just a foam cleanser, whereas the Spectro Gel is a gel, but it's like a really thick consistency gel, and sometimes like, oh, I still have it on my hands, and sometimes it gets caught in like your little hairs up here, and it just, it, it looks weird, or if you don't get all of it fully off, like sometimes in my chin, like I, like, 
you know when you wash your face and it drips down and then I use um I use like a, a towel to just kind of dry off this under area that sometimes you miss um but with the spectral gel it would like peel off and look like you'd have skin peeling off you so that's also part of the reason I switched from it anyways moving on because it's already five minutes in and I've only done one product <laughs> um so in combination with that I use my Furio this has been a changer this is just I can't say enough about it my skin is so clean when I use it um if I have an active breakout by the next morning after I use this it is significantly smaller than it was um and it it fits into the whole one minute cleansing because it times it on the certain areas of your face and if you don't know uh just quickly going into it you should wash your face for one minute um to really get everything out and that's it just moving on because it's taking forever. Um, and then my holy grail would be the Psychopair from Dr. Dart. It's the Tiger Grass Repair Serum. Um, so again, this is completely safe for acne prone and sensitive skin. It's You don't use a lot. It comes in a little dropper. But honestly, I use about like half of the dropper because a full one, like I have excess. So it lasts a very long time. It's not heavy, it's not oily. It helps balance my oily skin, but also helps with the dryness that I get from my cleanser. Uh, so it pairs very beautifully. Um, so next, we'll finally move on to makeup. Um, so as I said, yeah, there's not really, there's no new products in here. Um, I just, I haven't, like anything that's new hasn't been okay for my skin. So I just haven't really been able to try it. So these will be products you already know, but they're tried and true and they are safe. So I use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette because um, I really like to just have like just some browns to add some definition and it kind of does make my eyes pop a little bit. Um, so I mainly use Rustic and Cypress Umber. Those are like my two go-tos. Uh, next, I use the Kylie Cosmetics Blush in Hopeless Romantic. It's just a really pretty color. It's like, it's a red, but it has a little bit of a corally tone to it. Um, and I'm and I'm tan right now, so I find like it goes really well. I used to love using NARS Orgasm, but it had some irri like irritating products in it. Um, so I haven't used it lately, but I'm thinking of picking up again to use it just like on nights out because I really do miss it. Oh, I hate, sorry. My hair is so frizzy and strawberry mask, but anyway, sidetracked. Um, but yeah, so I might pick up Orgasm because it's such a it's such a cult favorite and it's a staple and I really do miss using it. Um, so next is Park Avenue Princess from Tarte. This is the Amazonian Clay Matte Waterproof Bronzer. Um, I get the matte one because I do have oily skin so the last thing I need is a bronzer with shine in it and then like I get all shiny up here and whatever. Um, this is waterproof and it really is waterproof. In the summer, like when I go to the water park, um, I go to Wonderland a lot and then I go to the water park in it and I don't put anything on my face except for I do my eyebrows um, and bronzer and this bronzer stays on like my face will be soaking wet and you know how like how you rub and whatever um, when your face is wet it stays on so this really is waterproof and definitely sweat proof so it's a summer favorite but it's also like I use it year round because it's the only bronzer that goes light enough for my light skin. <laughs> um, or else it's like it's really too dark and it's like just a mess. Like even sometimes this is borderline too much for me. Um, but it's it's honestly the best I've ever tried and I think it might be the best out there. I'm thinking of trying the Fenty Beauty one. The only thing in the Fenty one is that it's not waterproof. But now that we're going to winter, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I'll try it. But it's also more money for less product. So I'm just like, eh, if I already like this one and whatever, it's like, why am I going to try the other one? But I also, I want to make sure I'm not missing out. So I might try the Fenty one after. If you've tried the Fenty bronzers, um, please let me know. Like, how are they? Do you like them? Do you recommend them? Just give me a little insight so that I can have some info going in. Next product I am going to talk about is my Marc Jacobs Shameless Foundation. This is in shade R300 medium. Um, this foundation is amazing. It looks beautiful on camera. It's not light. I mean, sorry, it is light. It's very light. It's extremely light. That's why I like it. It's not heavy. It's not cakey. 
it applies beautifully with your hands or with a brush um, and it doesn't necessarily cover all spots but I kind of like that because it, it shows that your skin is still real skin but it's not like big red pimple just like grr, attacking whoever you're talking to like um, it smooths everything out to the point where people don't really notice it um, and it's like I said it still looks like natural skin it doesn't look like you're wearing foundation I don't think it looks like I'm wearing foundation per se um, and it's self setting so you don't need to use a powder which I love because again it makes it look like you're not wearing makeup I don't like powder especially because I get oily and then it gets cakey and it's a mess um, so this is an amazing product I love it it's my favorite I can't really say more about it but I also can't stop talking about it it's weird but I definitely recommend getting a sample from Sephora uh, next favorites are Too Faced Love Light used and abused I can't open it because it's broken um, but it's in the shade Ray of Light which is like the rose gold color it's just it's a really nice highlighter that doesn't really have a lot of sparkle or anything in it so when I get oily throughout the day it doesn't really like just add more oil um, my next is my Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Powder Duo. I use Ebony. This is my, f like, holy grail. Like, I cannot live without this. On no makeup days, I still apply it so that my brows are... What are my brows? I consider my brows to have a certain look. Um, and I get a lot of compliments on them and a lot of girls asking me, like, Oh my god, can you upload a video of doing your brows? Which I will do next. Um, but it's like I kind of became known for my brows, as weird as that sounds. So this is what I feel like is to thank. And then next is I'm trying, I'm rushing because there's a 15 minute limit for me on YouTube because I'm not like some big YouTuber. So I'm trying to rush through everything. It's not that I don't have anything good to say, it's that I don't have time to say it. Um, so the next two is the NYX Suede uh, Lip Liner in... Huh. Oh, whipped caviar. Um, so I got this at Shoppers Drug Mart. It was in a clearance bin for like $2. So I bought it because it was $2. And I actually love it. I'm wearing it right now. It's like a almost like a mauvey pinky nude, which works perfectly because this is my favorite MAC lipstick. I'm wearing them both right now, by the way. Is this lipstick? It's called Kind of Sexy. It's a really nice nude, but it kind of pulls like a terracotta color. So I use that pinky lip liner and it kind of like counteracts it to get the perfect color that I like. So yeah. And then next, I'm not wearing it right now because this is for days where I'm not wearing foundation. But I love using the Benetton. It, it just gives me a nice little flush to look healthy and alive instead of dead. Um, and I like to use it on my lips too just to give them some color and flush and kind of tie it in together. Um, so yeah, I really recommend it. I like it. It's just you kind of have to work fast with it because it stains and sometimes you get it on your hands and like it wears off in a couple hours on your hands, but it's just for a little bit you have red fingers. Um, I don't have a mascara listed on here because I don't have it right now. I like the Kush mascara from Milk Makeup. It, when I'm not wearing eyelash extensions, which I'm not right now either. Um, but it just, it makes me feel like I am wearing lash extensions. It's so beautiful. Um, and then the last product is my perfume. I love this perfume. Um, it's Juicy Couture Viva La Juicy Glass. Um, I got it like last winter, I think. But it just, it's very light and fresh. And it's not heavy and like baby powdery like a lot of Juicy is. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of been my staple lately. So anyways... That's all. I'm out of time. Um, thank you so much for watching. I am plan on uploading videos a little bit more regularly. So please hit the subscribe button if you liked watching them and if you want to see all my new ones. I really appreciate any likes, subscribes, comments, um, especially if you share with me if you did try the Fenty Beauty Bronzer, how you like it. Um, I really do appreciate feedback too. So once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.